The first thing that I want to do is evaluate the cast for the placement of a record base and determine where I want to place that record base and how I'm going to design it. I have a general idea of what I want to do. I do not have to take the flange areas back to this posterior area because of this tooth supported design. I have crossed off the teeth that are missing on the cast and the de general design I would follow is this. I'm going to come down through here and I'm going to have a flange down to the uh, within three millimeters of the base of the uh, vestibule. I'm going to come through here and I'm going to plate this tooth and I'm going to plate that tooth. Then I'm going to bring my flange down in this area and I'm going to plate that one tooth back there for stability. Then I'm going to come across the arch. I'm going to plate all of these and join it to that point. So this will be the general design of my maxillary base plate. The mandibular base plate, we have an extension base area over on this side. So when we have an extension base area, when you make a record base, you should cover the retromolar pad at least half to two-thirds the way up and extend into the retromylohyoid fossa, which will sometimes give you a little bit of retention. On this side, I need a flange coming through this edentulous area, but I don't have to carry my base plate all the way back to cover the retromolar pad on the other side for stability. You want it to be broad and stable. So again, I've crossed off the teeth that I'm going to use, and my general design would be that my base plate will come along here, plate that tooth. It'll come down, I'll have a flange down to the depth of the vestibule, I'll plate that premolar, and I'm going to plate across these other incisors. Then I'm going to plate the premolar, the premolar, and then my flange will come down to the depth of the vestibule. It'll go around, cover my retromolar pad, and then I will be coming around like this, where I have plating down to the depth of the vestibule, or just three millimeters short of that depth of the vestibule, and this will be the general design for my mandibular. So here are the two designs that I'm going to try and place on my cast. To know where to place them, I'm going to play, first survey my cast. I am going to place my cast on the surveyor and what I want to do is place it with the ridges relatively parallel to the floor and the occlusal plane relatively parallel. The first thing I want to look at are all these guide plane areas which will be where my base plate will be coming and I want to make sure that I have undercuts that are about the same on the abutment teeth here. So I'm looking at the mesial surface of this molar distal surface of this premolar and little triangular spaces of light are very close to being equal on those and then I want to look at this one and again I think I have kind of the same situation when I look at that I can see just a little triangular space of light but it's not very much and it's about the same on all three of these teeth. If it weren't I could adjust my surveyor to the posterior or anterior and get it to the point where those are about equal. The next move then is to look at the linguals of the teeth. I'm going to look at the lingual aspect of my premolars and that little triangular space of light is pretty close to being equal to that of my molar. So if it were way off I would tilt my cast to equalize those spaces. So at this point I can tripod my cast and I can survey it. Because I'm going kind of by my design, I'm going to survey these teeth. And anything below the survey line we know is an undercut. And we sure as heck can't let our base plate go into those undercuts or if it goes into those undercuts and it turns hard and then we try and remove it off the cast, zingo the nice little teeth off the cast. So we, we have to block out any undercuts 
that are on the cast. Survey all these teeth on the lingual. Now on these teeth next to the edentulous areas, I'm going to bring my survey around the buckle surface of them. And I'll explain why in just a little bit. I'm going to come along the facial of this tooth too. And I have done that as a, a real rough. It's not as accurate as when we get that O3 undercut page out. But I'm just getting three little marks at the end of the lead to kind of tripod that cast. I'm going to place my design on the cast. The record base will come down the front surface of the cast and it's going to be about three millimeters short of the depth of the vestibule. It's going to come back here and cover retromolar pad. It's then going to come down into the retromylohyoid fossa and be anywhere from three millimeters from the depth of the vestibule down to the depth of the vestibule. And have it a little bit short, the depth of the vestibule. It's going to come around, and I'm going to have to draw this and then turn it around for you. It's going to come down three millimeters below the depth of the vestibule. I have done this, and it's then going to come back and come up, and it will be right on the distal of that tooth. Now, the, the record base will have to be above the survey line. So I'm going to put my line around here. It has to be above your survey line. And then it's going to come across, come down three millimeters to the depth of the vest, above the depth of the vestibule. It's going to avoid that frenum a little bit. You can come around like this if you wish and then come back up. It'll probably touch that side and then it's going to plate all of these anteriors. It'll probably come straight across those anteriors. It has to be above the survey line on the two premolars and then it can plate here or come down and join our flange area on this side. So that's our design for the mandibular. I'm going to survey my maxillary cast. The first thing that I want to look at, I'm going to look at my guiding planes and I'm going to try and equalize the triangular space of light on my premolar and on my molar here and um, it's real close. Then I'm going to, if it weren't close and I wanted that molar to be a little smaller, I would adjust my cast posteriorly. That would decrease this undercut and increase this undercut. So I move it just slightly and then I have to look again at my triangular spaces of light and they got even a little more closely uh, to approximate one another. Then I have to look on the um, canine side and I want to look at this guide plate and I want to look at the undercut on this guide plate and I want those triangular spaces of light that appear down in these areas to be about the same amount and they are. So next if I didn't like that I would be tilting the cast to the left or to the right. On the lingual, most of these, that, that height of contour is going to be right down there, pretty close to the gingiva, and I like what I see. So I'm going to survey the cast. And my base plate's going to come around this way. I've got to, again, put your lead all the way down to the level of gingiva because a lot of these teeth on this um, maxillary, the, gen, the uh, margin of the gingiva, will be the height of contour of these teeth. I'm coming through here. I get the mesial of my molar. And again right down there at the gingiva. 
come around the back and I'm going to get the facial of this more. Alright, I'm going to continue around all around this area. Same way on here. I'm going to come around keeping my lead at the gingival margin but the side of it marking the survey you should have this down now a little bit because you've got a test coming up survey around this tooth surveying around that tooth surveying around the facial but I do want to get the distal of that tooth. And I'm just going to roughly tripod this cast by taking the edge of the lead and mark three widely spaced points in case I would take it off the surveyor and need to get it back on. And I will circle those. I have a little blue pen here. I'm going to circle them just so I know that those are tripod marks. Anything below these survey lines are undercuts. So I have undercuts all along here. I have undercuts here. I have undercuts from the survey line down here coming out here. And survey line here, undercuts right in there. The ones on the lingual are very shallow. We'll just have to basically fill in a little bit of wax to block out the undercuts at the gingival areas. So those all have to be blocked out with wax. The same is true on my mandibular. All these are undercuts. Below the survey line are undercuts. I will plate the molar and I'm wrapping around a little bit, just a little bit to the distal of that tooth and then I'm coming down. And the reason I'm doing that is that that Wrapping around that distal will prevent anterior-posterior movement of that record base. I'm going to plate right along here, and then my flange will come down right in here. It's going to be three millimeters short of the depth of the vestibule, and I'm probably just going to come on up here, avoiding that frenum attachment. It'll come up. It has to be above that survey line. I'm going to plate. Now you want to avoid occlusion. So you want to plate no higher, preferably, than the middle third. I'm going to plate that tooth. We're going to come down in this area and we're going to develop a flange here. Coming down three millimeters short of the depth of the vestibule, I'm going to come up around that frenum attachment and come back up at this line angle over here. Then we will plate all of these teeth above the survey line but no higher than the middle third of the tooth. And at this point I'll bring my base plate back across the palette to join the other side. So there's our basic outline. I do want to emphasize is that you want to round these angles here. Okay, you don't want any sharp right angles on these flange areas.